Hi, my name is Ann Beal, and we welcome you to the show, Living Well. Today with, with us is our guest, Pete Incavilla. <clears throat> He's a professional baseball player, and we have him here today to talk about what it's like when you're on the road a lot and you can't be home as much, uh, being good role models for youth, and just really wanted to visit with him and see what life is like as a professional athlete. Pete Incavilla, his statistics are pretty incredible. He has over 200 home runs. His batting average is around 250, and he's played for Texas, Detroit, Houston, if I leave anybody, just tell me, <laughs> Philadelphia, Baltimore, and the New York Yankees. You can say just about anybody. <laughs> you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> Welcome to the so show today. Thank you. We have Pete here to ask him questions about his family, as I said, but we want to start out just kind of asking you questions about what it's like to be a professional athlete. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, it's a, you know, when you're a kid, everybody dreams about it being a professional athlete, but, uh, and when you're finally there, you really don't feel like a professional athlete, you know, I mean, as far as myself, I mean, everybody's a different individual. Some people really take to being a famous person, and some people just kind of like to stay the same. I guess I'm on that, you know, that sheet, you know, where I'd be down at the bottom. I'm a pretty low-key guy. I don't. I don't like a lot of attention. I just pretty much keep to myself. Um, and uh, it's, it's really not a big deal to me or to my family or to my kids. I'm just dad and so, just, you know, a husband to Lori. You know, I'm not a, you know, this high and mighty figure that, you know, people seem to look up to because, you know, my kids sometimes, they, they go, Dad, how come everybody wants your autograph, you know? It's <laughs> like, you know, I say, I, I, you know, I don't know, son, you know, but as they got older they started to appreciate I guess started to appreciate more understanding it more you know but as far as I'm concerned I think it's you know it's it's, it's been great for me I mean uh, the life um, I've been fortunate enough to do something for 14 years that I enjoy and I love to do and I mean if you can do that I mean it, it, anything that makes you happy is, is, is great. I think a great thing so um, I, I've been I've been very fortunate I've been very very blessed by God you know and uh, uh, I just feel thankful every day that I'm able to do something that I love to do every day. That's great. Th does the celebrity status not, because I, I, I would think, and my, my husband's first question was, how do you go from, yeah, you're the man, you're the man, and you're great, and the, clou the crowd applauding, and hearing all that, and then coming home and just like having to wipe noses, and having your wife, you know, have a hard day, and having to vacuum the floor, and I would think that would be a hard transition to make. Well, you know, everything takes a little bit of work. I, I've been, I'm, like I said, I'm very fortunate. I have a wonderful woman in my life, and behind every good man is a really great woman, and I believe in that. And she's really held things together. As, as, as you know, when I'm off playing, uh, she's a mom and a dad, and she's got to take care of everything, and she's got to put drag the kids on the airplane, and. And you can get them to where I'm at because I'm I got to be here at a certain time. I got to be there, so it's kind of frantic. Uh, and uh, you know, when I come home, the off season is it's pretty much strictly family. And I try and help her out as much as I can because you know she's been doing without a spouse for you know seven eight months. You know, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. you know it's a big sacrifice on her part. And uh, uh, so I try and show her that I really appreciate that. You know that she's she's. Uh, Supported me through my career, and uh, and uh, it, it's it's tough. You got to work at it. I mean, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy lifestyle. It's not, quote unquote, what everybody thinks it's cracked up to be. You know, yeah, everything up front. You know, you you, you have the fame. You know, you, you make good money. Um, your family lives well. But on the other side, it's it's tough. It's it's a tough deal. It's something that you got to work at. It's not easy for anybody. I would think seven months, that's quite a bit of time to make up for, you know, yeah. quite a deficit. How, how do you do that? I mean, do you, when you're on the road, do you have a video phone or email or what do you do there? Well, you know, I mean, it's a, we talk every day, you know, we talk yeah. on the phone every day and, you know, we, we see each other. I mean, they'll come down and see me or I'll try and fly home on a day off or something and come spend a day off and the next day at home. It, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, uh, it's it, you have to work it. Like I said, when I get a, you know, we play, say we play like 20 straight days, mm -hmm. and we have a day off. You know, I, I mean, I don't feel like getting on a plane and and, and, and getting on another plane to come home, but I know that I have to do it because I want to see my kids. You know, so you just have to just, you just have to work it out. You know, it's just you figure it out. 
You know what I mean? If the yeah. kids have got four or five days off, you know, you, you try and get them on a plane and get out. You know, we we uh, we do the best that we can, and, and family in our family, fam, the kids come first. You know, our children come first. Uh, uh, everything will be sacrificed for the children because you know, to, to me and my wife. Uh, they're the most important thing to us in the world. You know, there's nothing else that's uh, that I wouldn't give up for them. You know, so uh, we try and put them first, and we try and 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 stay together. And it's it has its fun times, and you know, and everything has its down times too. I mean, it's tough. It's it's a uh, it's a it's, uh, it's it's never boring. I'll say that <laughs> it's no, never I, boring. I it's kind of a hard hard question, you know, to get into it because it's it's just. It's just an on the go, you know, on the move, uh, you know, nonstop roller coaster ride for seven or eight months. You know, I mean, it's yeah. just so nonstop. So the family, they do try to, they do come out. Then I know, did Lori ever travel with you? Oh, it's yeah, they they come out, but you know, after a while, it kind of wears on on her. You know, I mean, it's yeah. hard. You know, especially when they were younger and they're just babies, and you know, I mean, it's not like I can get on the plane and help her, you know, I gotta, you know, I have a job, I mean, it's not like I can miss a day, you know, it's like, say, hey, I'm gonna call in sick today, you know, it doesn't work that way, you know, yeah. you have to be there. Your time is allotted for seven or eight months, and I have to be at that place at that certain time all the time, you know, I mean, there's, all my time is allotted for, so it's not like I can, like, call in sick or say, hey, I'm gonna be a little late for the game, uh, it doesn't work that way, you know, you're getting, get huge, you're getting huge trouble, so. I mean, after a while, I think, you know, for her, you know, dragging the kids around and, I mean, it's, it's, it's not an easy job. It's the toughest job in the world as far as I'm concerned is, is you know, it's raising children and, and, and teaching them to have the right morals and values. And uh, like I said, I, I'm very fortunate. I got a very strong, strong woman behind me and she's, she's the greatest as far as I'm concerned. I couldn't do what I do if it wasn't for her. There's no question about that. It does sound like it, it's quite a calling to be a, a professional athlete's wife. She seems to do real well in it, though. Yeah, she does. I mean, she's a, she's a wonderful person, and uh, she is really, uh, you know, we've, we're, we're going on uh, 14 years of marriage. Our anniversary's in January, so we got married at a young age. I mean, we were in college, and, uh, you know, she, um, she's been through a lot. I mean, she's, you know, we've. We went from, you know, she was supporting me while I was playing summer ball in college as a secretary, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, we've we've traveled a, a huge, a uh, huge area in the last 14, 15, 16 years. So, uh, um, it's been a fun. It's it's been a blast, and uh, thank God for her. I don't know how I would have a family, you know. I mean, it it would be literally impossible for someone like myself to have a family without a a strong woman, you know, strong spouse behind you. There's no question about that. I mean, it takes a very special person to do that. Well, I know that a lot of people, when they asked about professional athletes, that was their main question. What happens when they go on the road? Um, how does their family, you know, you know deal with that? Yeah. And um, I know, for me, I would wonder <clears throat> how you balance, like, the discipline in the home. With you being gone that much, and, and then you come back, they would probably have gotten into a routine, and Right. And uh, have things kind of their way, and then you come back and you know, there's dad. And yeah, I, um, I, 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 I think I've. It's not like I don't stay in touch with my children, and don't know what's going on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I mean, I'm, you know, Lori lets me know exactly what's going on, how they're doing at school, you know, how they're behaving, and all that. So I, I stay on top of that, even though I'm, I might not see them for a week. You know, mm -hmm. I might, you know, and then I see them, and then I can approach about it. I mean, they know that, you know, that uh, whatever mom says is the same thing I'm going to say, you know, they, they, you know, when they get to that age, mine are 11 and 9 now, they, they try and, you know, work one yeah, and then, you know, move to the yeah. other one, you know what I mean? And, and we tried to make sure that we're on the same page. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely when I come home in the off season is, uh, you know, they have their routine. I just kind of slowly kind of just kind of try and squeeze in and, and try not to step on any toes and, uh, you know, try and uh, slowly move back into to our normal life, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's different. I mean, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to, to adjust to, but 
we've done it for so long. So, yeah. you know, we've, we've done it for so long, and uh, uh, so far it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Does that ever happen when you, because on the off season you have how many months, like five months at your home? Uh, in the off season, um, depending on if you get in the playoffs or not in the playoffs, if you're in the playoffs, yeah, about five months. Uh, if you're not in the playoffs, about five months. If you're in the playoffs, I'm going to say uh, maybe four and a half months. So when you're home, you're, you're home. Yeah. I think we'd all appreciate being able to be home for five months. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice to be home. It really is. I, um, you know, it's funny. It's like uh, I used to come home and, you know, the family would be, you know, uh, want to do stuff. And, you know, and I'd be kind of like coming down off of seven months of every day, you know, on the mm -hmm. go, and that created a little friction, you know, sometimes, you know. A little bit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, now that when I come home and, you know, the life that you live, you know, in the first two or three or four years, it's very exciting because it's all new. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's all new stuff. It's all, you know, you travel in and, you know, you Everybody's family, your wife's coming with you, traveling, seeing all these new cities, and you're staying in the best hotels. And uh, I mean, I mean, it, it's so exciting. But after a while, it becomes not as important. You know what I mean? You kind of draw a line, and say, "Wait a minute, this is not important. This is not what I want." You know, I want to. You know, our children are important. You know, and, and this. So um, after a while, you, you just kind of get used to things. You know, I mean, it doesn't. Um, doesn't have the same meaning anymore, you know. I mean, like I said, you know, now that I'm a professional baseball player, I mean, I mean, to me and the family, it's, it's really not a big deal. It's what I do. It's my job. Just like you know, the guy that I go and have uh, you know pump gas into my car, you know, at the <laughs> station. You know, I mean, that's his job. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't consider myself better than anybody else because of what I do. Right. You know, I treat people how I would want to be treated, and I don't think that I should get special treatment. It's just the way I am. It's the way I've always been, and uh, i got my feet firmly on the ground, and I'm going to keep them there, and uh, I think my wife has helped me keep them there. You know, she's always been the one that's always had a, the hard time of going, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> kind of you know, the person that I've always listened to, and uh, uh, it's uh it can be frustrating at times. The life can be frustrating at times, and then the life can be the greatest in the world. You know, it has its ups and downs. You know, I mean, you go out and play before 50, 60,000 people, and you go out and hit a home run. I mean, you can't imagine the feeling, you know, mm -hmm. in, in inside of you. But if you go out there with the bases loaded in the ninth and you strike out, you can't imagine that feeling inside of you. So it's just a, a constant up and down, and you just kind of try and stay level-headed and not too. Uh, uh, you don't get too excited when things go good, and you don't get too down when things go bad. You just kind of try and stay right in the middle and, and putt along and keep your psyche okay. <laughs> mm. it, and there, I know there's a lot of ups, way ups, and a lot of way downs. And I, would, I kind of would like to tie it in with, you know, the average businessman who's gone a lot and he travels, and um, he can't be home as much either. And, you know, when he has a great day at work and he comes home, Things are great. When he has a bad day at work, he comes home. Things are bad. And it sounds like that would just be multiplied for you, or it could be. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I, at first it was, you know, you know, I kind of went through a learning process myself as my career went on, and um, the thing that was I used to do is I used to bring the game home with me. Yeah. And that was that was difficult you know for my wife to understand because she didn't really understand she thought maybe it was her and it had nothing to do with her it was just the fact that I was maybe still upset about the game or um, or you know and it caused you know it'll cause a little friction so I finally learned that once I walk out that door yeah. it's over with you know I mean whatever I whatever I want to think about I stay in that locker room until I want to leave it in the locker room. As soon as I walk through that door, it's over. I don't take it home with me anymore. Let's try to tie that in more when, um, with businessmen more when we come back. We'll take a short break. Thank you. Not just of 
strength, but of the power of the mind. And if you complete the journey, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the Marines. Hi, welcome to Living Well. We are back with our, our guest today, Pete Incavilia, and we're continuing to talk about what it's like being on the road. And for husbands is what we were relating it to, um, the men who are on the road a lot or just at the office a lot. What would you say would be one of the main things that they can do to really cultivate a relationship with their family in light of their deficit of time? How can they do that? Well, you know, when you're moving around, I mean, uh, I think communication is, is uh, the one biggest thing is to, is to uh, you know, you know, not necessarily, I mean, I know in my job, I mean, I can't speak for somebody who's a businessman because I'm not a businessman. I'm pretty much an athlete. Uh, I try and keep in touch with my wife and my kids every day and talk to them. And, you know, they call me and, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, I may be in Seattle and you might be in Dallas, but, I mean, it's like you're right around the corner, you know. I mean, uh, uh, so I think communication is, is the number one thing. And, and, and when you're home, you know, when, when we're together as a family, it's, it's really special because, you know, I'm, I'm not around all the time. So, I mean, take advantage of the time you have with your family and your wife and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, for me, I mean, as much as I'm gone, I try and make those times really special and, uh, for my wife and for my kids. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I think the time that you spend away it's got to be greater than the time that you spend with your family kind of mm -hmm. kind of making sense mm -hmm. and uh, because th that's important to me so um, you know I just think being you know communicating with your spouse and your children and uh, uh, being able you know like you know, if my son comes home and he wants to tell me about uh, you know what a great shot he made in hockey you know he can do that you know thank God for the the cell phone, you know. <laughs> Thank God for it. I mean, uh, that's how I, that's how I keep track of them. You know, I mean, they call me on that cell phone, and I call them. I mean, I could be in the locker room getting ready to go out and play, and the phone will ring, and I'll jump on the phone. You know, and I mean, that's, uh, I mean, that's that's what it's all about. It's just being there for your kids and your family. I mean, um, you know, like I said, it's just uh, I'm very, very fortunate to have such a such a wonderful family who loves to travel. Um, my wife loves to travel. That's I mean, good. That's they, good. <laughs> you know, they, they, they love going to stadiums. They love going to hotels. And my kids love ordering room service. I mean, I just, I can't tell you how blessed I feel to be able to, to have the best of both worlds. I'm able to go out and do something I love to do. And yet, I, I, I have two wonderful children and a, just a phenomenal, outstanding wife who just pretty much takes over the household and, and just gets everything done and and uh, it's uh, I feel very fortunate I'm a very lucky person that's great Let, let's talk about your kids Nicholas and Renee yeah right? I know I'm a counselor at Cornerstone Counseling Center and one of the main questions that I hear from parents is you know they want them to be good at what they do they want them to have skills play the piano well be good athletes um, make good grades so I wanted to, to ask you, how do you balance that between, because they see you, your kids see you being praised for being a great baseball player, and people want your autograph, as you said, and people are trying to get to you because you're a great baseball player, and yet they really don't know anything about you. No. How would you say that you balance it with them to really understand what are the important things about them, their values, and what they feel, and being a good person, whereas the skills are good, but also, I mean, how do you balance that? Well, you know, I, I've, I've always said I'm not going to be one of those parents that push my child into doing something just to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I've always told my daughter and my son, whatever they want to do, I will back them up. You don't have, I told my son, you don't have to play baseball. It's just because I'm a baseball player doesn't mean you have to play baseball. If you want to play baseball, I will support yeah. you 100 percent. I said, uh, the only thing that I want you to do is if you do participate in some, whether it be baseball, football, basketball, you know, my daughter, gymnastics, soccer, cheerleading, you know, whatever it may be, I want you to give it 100%, and I want you to start what you finished. 
And uh, I said, I, I don't care what you do. As long as that you're enjoying yourself and, and you want to do it, I'll stand behind it. And I'm not, you know, it's funny. It's like uh, my son really has taken to, to hockey, you mm -hmm. know, and I get so many people that go, well, he doesn't play baseball. I'm just like, well, is he supposed to play baseball? You know, I mean, I, I just, I don't, it's kind of like that, it's kind of like an old myth, you know. If mm -hmm. you're a baseball player, you're, you know, everybody in your family is going to be a, a baseball player. You know what I mean? I just, I, I think that's kind of like an old wise tale, you know. And uh, that might be tough to follow in your footsteps. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want that for them. I mean, I don't want that for them. I mean, you know, I don't want my son to say, "Oh, there goes Pete and Cabilia's son." I want him to say, "There goes Nicholas and Cabilia." I mean, he's an individual, and and he has different you know tastes he has different you know things he likes to do than I do and I want him to be an individual I just I'm just going to try and bring him up with the right values and 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 and, and uh, you know the things that are very important and try and support him and give him lots of love and and uh, you know try and support him in anything he wants to do you know no matter what it is and I think that's important and the same with my daughter you know I mean they they they, you know, they've tried everything. They've done this. You know, my daughter's done the soccer thing, and <laughs> she's uh, was going to play basketball, but didn't play basketball. And now she's into a cheerleading type. Uh, uh, I think it's called champion cheer. You know, they go have meets every weekend, mm -hmm. and they, uh, and so I've been following her, and she really enjoys to do that, and she's kind of really found the thing that makes her happy. And so, you know, I I support them in whatever they do. Just try and be there at every game, you know, because I, I'm. You know, for you know, I've been playing baseball for 14 years, be married for 14 years, so this is you know it goes okay. hand in hand, you know. Yeah. And so I mean, it's sometimes it's kind of hard, you know. Sometimes you know I, I miss my son, you know, going to his sporting events. I miss my daughter's, you know, activity events. And uh, so you know, when I'm home, I try and make sure that I'm at everyone and, and show them that I'm interested and I do care. You know what I mean? You know, when kids get to that age, you know, that they're at now. You know, it's, I think it's important that your parents stay, you know, active and interested in your child's uh, activities, uh, the things they like to do. Just try and be a friend as long as a parent, you know, and, uh, and that's, uh, it's, it's been fun, you know, I mean, but, you know, my wife, on the other hand, has been there from day one, and she's been with them, and, you know, I mean. Is that, uh, is that hard to, um, because it sounds like, you know, you have the, the athletics that you have to perform that you do because it's your job right and on your days off you have have to come I mean, you, you make it a, a point to come back home and be with your family and I would think at times they might want to go out and do stuff and you might be tired yeah <laughs> and, you know uh, yeah it's it's the truth and, I mean <laughs> and yet you're trying to put them first and right when do you um, when do you put Pete you know first how do you do that? Is that is do you consider it your career? That? I don't know. I mean, if you talk to my wife, she said I've always come first. But <laughs> <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, uh, yeah, it's tough. At first, it was tough. You know, I mean, like I said, I went you know from playing it's 14 years. Obviously, I've, in the last six or seven, I've I've gotten better at handling what I learned in the first two or three years. You know what right. I mean? So. Um, yeah, there's plenty of times when I'm home and I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just spent from a whole season, and I need a couple of weeks just to, you know, join the human race again. You know, mm -hmm. you, you know, you feel like a, you feel like a piece of meat. You know, that they they run out there every every day, no matter what. You know, I mean, um, don't get me wrong, I love what I do, and I I feel blessed for being able to do what I want to do. But, you know, it's, we don't get weekends off. You know, Saturday and Sundays when when you get when most people are getting the days off, you know they're coming to the ballpark, come watch us play. You know, right. what I mean, so you know we may run into you know 16, 17 days in a row of playing every day, you know, without a day off. And and don't get me wrong, like I said, I love what I do, but I'm saying at the end of seven or eight months, you're spent. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you you're do that spent. when you get home? What? Well, you know, I I used to I used to just kind of sit around for a week, and I used to drive my wife nuts. She hated that, you know. She hated me sitting on the couch, and and I'm like just trying to touch her. Look, I'll I'll be okay. Just give me a week. Give me, you know, let me 
let me get, you know, let me join the race again, you know, I mean, I just, you know, mind is constantly, you know, on the game, and then when the game's done, you know, when the season's over, it's all, all right, you know, let's unjumble everything in your head, and let's, you know, get on the, you know, get on the program mm -hmm. here, and it's, it's a tough thing to do, it really is, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a tough thing, I just say you got to have a strong family, and you got to have a, a very good woman behind you who, so do you get up and go, or do you sit? Which one do you do? Oh, yeah, I get up and go now, yeah. I mean, I, I, I pretty much, uh, you know, I, I, try, I just try and help my wife out as much as I can in every way. You know, I try and wash, you know, do the dishes, you know, really? vacuum a little bit, you know, make, <laughs> make the bed, you know, just things that may not, you know, but, but mean a lot to, to my wife, you know. I mean, just yeah. see, try and help her out, you know, in any way I can. And... Uh, I know for a lot of people who work a lot, they come home and they need some time to themselves and, and yet they've been gone so much, the family wants their attention, the kids want to play, the kids want attention. And, um, and so many men have their jobs and they have their families, but they don't have a lot of friends. They don't have a lot of free time. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you have friends and free time? Yeah, I mean, I play, I mean, I play a lot of golf and uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a lot of friends. But you know what's funny is, um, most of my friends are spread out the United States, you know. Yeah. So like, I got friends in Arizona, I got friends in California, I got friends in New York. I, you know, a lot of places that I played, I made a lot of good friends, but I don't ever get to see them because we're, you know, we're, yeah. you know, we're so far apart. So, uh, and, I, and I have a lot of friends here in, in, the, in the Metroplex, and I mean, uh, I like to golf, but you know, it's hard in the off season too. I also have to train. Yeah. You know, for the upcoming season, it's like, okay, the season's over. All right, you took a week off. Now it's back to the gym. You know, it's back to, you know, starting to run. It's back, you know, I mean, you got to train for the upcoming season. So it's it's kind of a nonstop ordeal, you know. It, like it. Yeah, you know, it's a nonstop. I mean, it's, it's kind of like you play the season, then you get on your off-season program, and then, and then you know, before you know it, spring training's here, you know, and it's like, God. What happened to the four months, the four and a half months I had off, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you just kind of have to, you know, like, like your family gets in a routine, you get in a routine, and, uh, and you just try and make those routines mesh and, and work, and work together. And but it seems like, <clears throat> of all the baseball players, I mean, it seems like you've done a good job being able to balance it. It just sounds like that, <sighs> even though it's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a lot of work. Uh, I think my wife has balanced it more than I have. Yeah. I think she deserves more credit, you know, for the family life than I do because, mm -hmm. I mean, she has sacrificed the most, out of, I think, all of us. And uh, I think, you know, giving her her due is important for me because I... I, I appreciate that, and you have to show that, I think, to your spouse. Hey, I appreciate you, you know, putting, putting your maybe aspirations and things that you may have wanted to do aside for me, and, and, and I think that's important. And uh, she, she's the one that holds things together. She keeps the family, and she's a strong woman, and uh, I'm very proud of her. You know, I know her a little bit, and she's, yeah. she's really involved at the school and really yeah. involved with the kids and says wonderful yeah. things about you. Yeah. I, I appreciate you being on. We thank you for being here. And it's been nice to hear about what a professional athlete's life is like and his right. family and how he balances it. And it sounds like you've just really done good. And mm -hmm. we thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. You're welcome. And thanks for watching Living Well.